Starting with the convention, um, it has been already discussed. Uh, the entry into force is on September 2017. In the previous uh, uh, panel discussion, I saw that there was only one gentleman uh, raising his hand about the question uh, for your international ballast water management uh, certificate. What we have seen so far, our feedback with uh, ship operators is that most of you have already uh, the ballast water management plan approved and the statement of compliance issued for your vessels either on behalf uh, of the flag administration or at owner's request. So now you will need to consult with uh, your classification society and uh, the statement needs to be uh, swift either to the international uh, certificate for vessels that the flag has uh, is sign signatory to the convention or to a statement of compliance on behalf of the flag administration uh, for the flag states that they have not accessed the convention. Um, of course, we discussed about the uncertainty on the implementation schedule. I'm not going to stay a lot on this. A uh, few words about the G8 guidelines. This goes the question uh, raised by Apostolos. Uh, most of you, you already know uh, the answer. The resolution will be this, 27970. It will be a mandatory code because this is also discussed earlier and we are expecting in a few days this to be officially published. Uh, October uh, 2018 will be the deadline for the vendors approving the systems. Uh, of course they can do it earlier, however this is the deadline. And also for the installation on board the vessel it would be October 2020. And of course owner can install uh, er earlier. It is recommended to install earlier. Um, this is a question uh, very frequently raised by ship owners about uh, what will be the effect of the systems using chemicals to their um, paintings and the ballast tanks. So uh, please note that there is a requirement um, that systems using uh, chlorine dosing more than 10 milligram per liter, as you see there, these systems need to pass through some uh, a specific test and meet the corrosion criteria. Um, so uh, there goes uh, a test procedure according to, to this circular 13, uh, revisions 2 and 3, that the GESAM ballast work, working uh, uh, group was following. However, recently they decided, uh, instead of using this procedure, to use um, the PSP uh, criteria, the criteria for um, performance standards of protective coatings in order to, to meet a level playing field. And now the requirements are a, a little, let's say, more relaxing compared with the previous methodologies. Um, okay, let's move to the next. A few, uh, let's say, important things that have been discussed in the previous MEPC um, 70. We already discussed about the experience building phase. Um, one important issue is that uh, there is a discussion started about the contingency measures. This is very important for the ship owners because depending on the outcome of these discussions and uh, the last committee invited uh, flag states and uh, uh, to present at the next meeting, there are proposals about the contingency measures. This uh, relates uh, what will be the requirements for ship owners in case there is a fault in a system, a system is not working. And depending on how strict the con contingency measures will uh, going to be, uh, because they are going to define the contingency measures, then you are need to start uh, uh, talking with the vendors about providing uh, redundancy to your systems. 
There was also a proposal by India about the ballast water treatment board concept. Um, they are proposing to have uh, in the uptake port uh, ballast water treatment board using uh, chemical uh, technology and to have installed on board the vessel only the neutralizing unit, which is very uh, simple and quite uh, cheap uh, uh, unit. So the vessels will take the ballast on board and they will only need to use the neutralizing unit while discharging this ballast at the next port. There is discussion about uh, the same risk area approach. This um, relates uh, for uh, ships on uh, short shipping, operating between, let's say, two or three countries in a limited area, and uh, under um, the regulation A4 can be accepted. So this is an option that you should also have in mind. And, um, of course, vessels on national voyage, in case they're going to make one international voyage for repair or maintenance or whatever, uh, they could be uh, accepted for that particular voyage. And also there is an interesting um, development for tanker operators that if they take ballast water on cargo tank, this does not need to be treated and they can discharge it according to Marple Annex 1. <laughs> A few words about the requirements in the United States, you have already discussed. Of course, the United States have not ratified the convention and possibly they are not going to do it. So vessels trading in the US water, if, if they discharge ballast water 12 nautical miles from the coast, then they will need to meet the US Coast Guard regulation. If they dis discharge within three nautical miles from the coast, then they need to comply also with the EPA BGP. And as it has been mentioned earlier, we are expecting uh, next year, the 2018, the draft uh, uh, text at the beginning. Uh, and of course, we will have the new BGP 2018. And there are also some additional requirements by some specific states with California the most stringent. You are familiar with the implementation schedule. This is not related with the IPP renewal, but with the first dry docking. Uh, the type approval prog uh, progress, as you see, 20 weeks, land-based, seaboard te testing, six months, etc. So the whole process takes about two years. We have one system that has reached the final stage and two systems that they have submitted their test results in the marine safety set Sorry, of the US Coast Guard. OptiMarine received the, the type approval. We have uh, two systems, Alpha Laval and Tosia Saver, that have uh, submitted their results. There was a question earlier about the extension letters. More than 10,000 have been uh, issued by the US Coast Guard, and the US Coast Guard has received uh, more than 1,000 extension requests for vessels with compliance in 2018. What will be the next steps? This is important. Uh, the US Coast Guard issued a marine safety information bulletin. Uh, on the 2nd of December, informing the ship owners that now, of course, they can continue uh, applying for extensions. However, they will need to submit um, supplementary documentation about the reason why the OptiMarine system so far uh, cannot meet their needs and why this system is not suitable to be installed. And you can see here a list of uh, examples of the additional documentation that you should include with, uh, within your uh, request. And uh, regarding California, you also need to have in mind these requirements while discussing with your vendors because require California has the interim standards and the final standards. The interim standards are about 1,000 times more stringent compared with the US Coast Guard, EPA, and TIMO standards. And the final are, are actually zero detective living organisms. 
but they have postponed the implementation for the either much you can see after first January 2020 and uh, first dry docking after 2020 for existing vessels and uh, the final standards have been uh, moved to first January 2030 and this completes my presentation thank you